Hi everyone and welcome to Asami Rap Care. So this is um, another video in my series on um, may breeding, sorry. Um, this one's specifically on pregnancy and it's quite appropriately timed as if you're paying any attention whatsoever to my um, various other videos that I'm putting out at the moment or my pictures. Um, Mog is quite convincingly pregnant so let's try and figure out, found, figure out where she is. Oh, yes, I think I found a Mog. I want to be quite gentle with her at the moment because Mog is on day 21 of pregnancy so that means that she's probably due either tomorrow or the day after maybe the day after that so you can see Mog is quite large aren't you Missy? Um, so what I'm going to try and do is talk you a little bit through um, pregnancy and what kind of things that you need to think about through the whole process because pregnancies are not always smooth you do have problems that occur they don't all work out in fact for rats that um, do so well in terms of as a wild animal, they can get everywhere, breed everywhere. Um, it's a lot harder <laughs> to actually have a fully successful pregnancy um, in a pet rat. I think this is partly because of when we breed them, the environments we keep them in, and, and actually the, the way we select for them as well. We don't select for kind of many, many litters, very fast, very young, um, generally speaking, um, because we want different things from them than from the wild. The wild is very cruel, but <laughs> it does improve fertility in theory. Um, because it wants, by nature, you know, it, it generates more and more rats. That's what it's designed for as such, um, natural selection. So, with pregnancy in rats, um, starts out straight after the mating. What you tend to do, so the days that I talk about in pregnancy, I will take day one as literally the day after mating. So, in my case, that's quite easy. Because of the way I use, I can tell exactly what day they've mated on and be able to work out my um, due dates and things like that. Um, so this is probably more relevant if you're going to follow that kind of approach. Um, so what do you do with a pregnant rat? What are the risks? What are the problems? So pregnant rats essentially at the start are very much like a, um, any other normal rat. Um, you can't see any real difference weight wise in those first few days. There's no real changes. Stuff's happening. Um, and actually, usually the first sign I see uh, that there might be a successful pregnancy is my girls tend to suddenly get hungry, <laughs> um, much more food motivated. So Mog has always quite liked food, but it's, it's one of those things that she eats and she likes some of it, but she's become obsessed with food. And um, if you've watched many of the enrichment feeding videos, you will see that she's very much interested in food, a lot more than she is normally. And generally the rat that's most interested in food, though Tato gives her a run for her money, but Tato's always loved food. Um, so this was the kind of first sy symptom, or symptom. Um, and I also tend to notice my girls get more um, licky, <laughs> affectionate with me as well. This is the same for every rat. What, what you do is you learn a line, um, and this is what happens in my line. So other than that, they seem perfectly normal, and I'm generally treating them perfectly normally. So for me, that means free-ranging is normal, interacting with them is normal. For rats that perhaps don't get that same one-on-one -on -one human interaction, don't suddenly increase it because they're pregnant, don't start handling them all the time, weighing them all the time, etc. Um, just try and keep things normal, because one of the kind of major issues in pregnancy is if you subject them to too much stress it increases the chance of the pregnancy failing and by failing it isn't normally harmful to the rat involved so they will just reabsorb the babies and um, nine times out of ten that happens without any problems the rats are absolutely fine um, there is always a risk later on in the process um, you can get things like they can get stuck in labour and so on but that's more to do with the birthing less to do with the pregnancy itself generally if a pregnancy ends it ends um, I should mention actually phantom pregnancies, these do exist, um, they do happen in rats. Um, I have it from a reliable source that typically they tend to go to 19 days and then the rat stops being pregnant so they will look, appear to gain weight or appear to kind of act um, kind of slightly more hormonal let's say than normal and so on but it's not a real kind of pregnancy. Um, I would say though I don't think I've actually had many of those, I've had quite a few pregnancies over the years that have not gone to term and I think Again, because of the style that I do the mating, I know <laughs> that they should be pregnant. So, And I've had a, a few. What I tend to find is a rat will either kind of get to about 14 to 19 days and then start reabsorbing, or they will go to term and then um, they just won't have any babies. Occasionally they might still birth one, but generally in mine, um, they just reabsorb the baby straight away if they're not going to happen. But I would say more, more pregnancies work out than don't. Um, but I think when I was a new breeder starting out, I didn't realise how many wouldn't happen. Um, 
though I do remember saying um, that fateful phrase to one of my friends when we were both planning on mating up three litters. Oh, do three, they won't all work out. Um, for both of us, all three of them worked out, so it's one of those you can't predict. Um, but yeah, so in that first kind of week, I would say, of pregnancy, um, you don't want to feed them any differently, other than it can be beneficial to give them a few extra supplements, um, kind of your vitamin Ds. In, in humans, and actually in studies that I've read on rats, folic acid and zinc can be quite important as well, so it's, it's worth considering foods that are high in those. Um, so then through to the second week. So the second week is probably the most risky in terms of rats losing um, babies. This is because... Of, of where the fetus is in the process it's starting to form it can become detached and that can um, basically end the pregnancy before it's really begun so that's the type of time period where not putting the rats through any stresses is even more important than normal so if you're going to need to move a pregnant doe so let's say you've sent the doe away to another breeder to be mated up then what you need to make sure is you try to move them in the first week or the third week so the third week is when they're quite imminently pregnant um, but things are a lot more attached then. It's that second week that's the real kind of risky period. So you want to do it as early as possible or quite late on, not too late, because then you could trigger birth early. Um, I think I might have actually seen that happen once. I had um, a litter that, they were born on day 22, which is, is a possible date um, for them to be born, but they were born ridiculously small. Um, and that doe's mum and her grandma and so on had all been day 24 births, so I feel like they were probably premature. They were only about two or three grams each. They were minute. It was ridiculous. And they, but to be fair, 11 of the 13 survived, so it was um, very impressive considering. But yes, so that's kind of like if you, if you leave it too late to move them. So it's all this, it's all about stresses. Keep minimising the stress during that p period of um, kind of pregnancy, and particularly in that second week. Um, so in terms of food generally, um, what some people do is they will start their pregnant doughs on extra protein, thinking right, extra protein means the babies will grow better and so on. Um, the babies will grow better, to be fair, um, but they will also get bigger and you don't want the babies to be too big when they're born because big babies get stuck. Um, a, a doe is actually quite small and you'd be surprised actually when the babies are born how big they are relative to the size of the rat. Uh, they're normally about, I don't know, about seven grams is, is considered the average, I think, from some of the studies that I've seen. Um, but that is still fairly sizable and that has to come out of the doe. And if a baby is too big, it will block, it will get stuck. It could kill the does. It's definitely likely to kill other babies further down the line and not make it itself. So it's a real risk. You don't want those babies to be too big. You want the rats to have enough nutrition for the babies to grow safely, but you don't want them to have an overabundance so the babies grow really, really big. Um, that is also true of calories. So, you, so Mog is a perfect example. She desperately, desperately wants to eat everything in the world ever. Um, and I've got to be really careful with her. Um, and I do with all of our doughs, actually, because they're, they're, they do all have this reaction. Um, because a fat dough, again, will have a lot of fat around various organs, and that makes birthing a lot harder on them. So you don't want your rat to get fat. You want them to put on baby weight, not fat weight. And a really good way of doing that, and it's why I, I probably still do it, is I kind of weigh the rat itself and a couple of controls um i don't always weigh to be fair weight isn't always an indication that the rat is pregnant but i do like to weigh my rats regularly during pregnancy to make sure that i'm not feeding the whole group a lot of extra so that my rats that aren't pregnant aren't gaining a lot of weight um it is fair to say that some rats will get more of their fair share of the food than normal um, i'm sure there's a small degree of that with mog there definitely was with um a doe i had a litter from last year waggle um i think she had five babies and she was at least as big as Mog. Um, I'm hoping Mog is more baby than food. Um, Waggle was definitely a fair bit of food in there. Um, and it's just it's just one of those that you kind of, some some does will be more at risk of it than others. You kind of more cat horsey does, if, if that makes sense. So your broader does, the rats that have already got the appetite, like Tato has a big appetite. I know she's going to be a nightmare when she's pregnant to try and keep thin. Assuming I breed from her, I probably will. Um, she's down there somewhere. Um, but yes, it's um, it's very much, that's probably the, the thing that I worry most about during pregnancy is trying to give them enough, enough nutrition, that a kind of normal level of nutrition with the extra supplements, but not too much food, not too much protein, not too much anything, just kind of normal level. I don't enrich my diet at all. It's, it's currently at what I'd call safe adult level of protein, which is about 14% last time I worked it out. Um, some people feed a much higher protein diet to breeding animals again it's not something that i choose to do because of this worry about the giant babies that you can get 
Um, so that's probably the main things happening within the pregnancy. Um, in terms of telling when they're pregnant, we've talked about like in that first week, you might see kind of behavioural changes. The other behavioural change that's quite commonly seen is the rat starts going up the hierarchy in the cage. So suddenly caring more about um, arguments. Um, I should do a video on hierarchy actually at some point. But effectively that rat can jump up to being a very dominant rat in the, in the hierarchy and getting their way more and more often and caring about getting their way more and more often because that's a really important part of hierarchy in rats. Um, so you, you may notice that some rats in rare cases will get a bit antsy with people and other rats. They might start getting um, quite argumentative and they might decide they don't want to be handled anymore. I would say take your cues from the rats. If they want to be with you, they will be with you. Um, if they want to kind of be left alone and spend a bit of quiet time, don't force them out. Um, you've kind of chosen for them to become pregnant, so you've got to respect how it affects them. Um, so that's kind of like behavioural changes. Then there is the kind of shape changes. So the first kind of time that I can reliably, I would say, um, tell that the rats are pregnant or not is around about a week to 10 days. Um, I normally can feel, and this is not always, <laughs> um, but more times than not, I can feel a slight shift in weight. Um, so we'll use Ellie even though she's not pregnant here. So when I hold Ellie at the moment, um, her weight is fairly evenly distributed around her body. You know, her shoulders are as heavy as her abdomen. Um, it's, it's easier to say than, <laughs> it, than it, well, it's easier to feel, sorry, than it is to say. Um, she's also universally kind of toned and squishy in the, in the same ratio all over. Now, when Ellie was pregnant, um, around about that week to 10 days, I, f I felt that her weight had shifted. So whilst I couldn't see an extra bulge on her at all, I could feel that she was firmer and heavier around her kind of abdomen kind of area. And that's usually the kind of first sign, but I don't always see it with every rat that does have a successful pregnancy. Um, so what you also may notice is the weights. So the weights change as they go along. Um, in that second week, I would say, so I, I tend to weigh when I can be bothered, <laughs> seven days, 10 days, um, 14 days, um, maybe 18, 19 days, and then 21 days, and then I stop, because to be fair, the dough um, should be left in peace when she's that close to birth. Um, and to be, you don't need to weigh. Um, we've had does that we've weighed and have put on absolutely no weight right up until probably the last like day 19, 20, and then suddenly bloomed. And some does put it on quite gradually. Mog's quite a good one, she's put it on gradually. But like I was saying, I weigh mostly to check that my does aren't putting a lot on a lot of fat. Uh, that they're putting on, if they're putting on weight, it's more baby weight. It helps me kind of treat my food. And um, so it works quite well for me. And my girls are used to being weighed. Um, if, if you've seen my notice board much behind me, um, I weigh them monthly anyway, just to kind of keep an eye on it and for information for my pet homes. Um, so what I've got up on here, in fact, I'll shift slightly to the side so you can see it. This is my mog weight chart. Um, and I should explain this actually. So um, what I've got is got the days along along this line and then I've got a line for mog here. And then I chose two, two controls because um, if I can, I do because one control can be put on a load of weight or lose a lot of weight suddenly and it kind of like helps even it out so by control i mean a rat that's not pregnant that's roughly the same age ideally the same age or a sibling um sibling is perfect but i don't always have siblings because quite often we have a, a group of litters together and then um home them kind of mixed up so neither of these are mog siblings but they're closely related and they are kind of a similar age so we've got tato and chocobo on there talk about it she came to visit me um so they've been my controls um i could have used fing but i felt she was due a growth spurt um so that would have thrown out everything um but tato and chocobo have been actually quite good controls for it so then what i've done is i don't weigh the morning after mating because they've generally had a very very active night um, they've probably not drunk or eaten as much as they would normally so they can be quite light like that so i weigh on day two or i weigh before mating if i've got a good idea when it's going to happen um, both of those work fine um, and then I've got to wait for day seven so on day seven um, Mog was about 400 grams so that was up 26 grams from um, her starting point which is actually quite substantial for day seven so immediately like hmm am I overfeeding her um, 
but actually the controls were only up by three grams. So whilst I probably had increased things a little bit, some of that probably was mog eating more than her fair share, but there was definitely some weight gain. And to be honest, um, I think I was pretty sure she was pregnant between day seven and 10-ish. Her day 10 weights are similar. She showed a slight gain, not actually much between seven and 10, but I suppose it's not very many days. Um, but she's still shown that slight gain and the controls were staying roughly about the same. So I knew I was going okay there. And then when you start seeing the real weight pile on is about that second week. So day 14, we suddenly see that she'd gone up, um, she'd gained about um, 40, 50 grams. And then when I took off the control gain, because to be fair, I'd been underfeeding my girls a little bit. When the weather changes, I'm prone to doing that because suddenly they need more and I'm not, I didn't up it enough. Um, so my controls had gained about 10, which I was happy with. And Mog had gained um, about 50, so she relative gain about, of about 40 grams at that two week mark. Um, I'd say in my experience that's a, towards the higher end, um, but it's a substantial gain and it was like by then there was no question that she was pregnant. And um, what I'm going to do by the way at the end of this, I'm going to stick a series of photos of Mog um, at, the, at various days during her pregnancy. I'll try and get them similar-ish, but Rats don't always pose how you want them to pose. Um, and I'll try and put the relative weight on there as well and the, well the, and the gain, um, taking into account the controls um, gain. So that should give you a bit of a picture of how her shape changes to her weight. Um, of course, it, I put it on there as an example. Every rat will change differently. Um, some rats, like I say, don't show until right near the end. Some rats that are already quite broad don't show as obviously till later on because they can expand more. Um, Mog was quite a narrow girl to start off with and so she's kind of expanded quite a lot and she's blindingly obviously pregnant. <laughs> she's also a young girl so she's more likely to have a larger litter. Um, so again, she's grown bigger. I'm hoping it's a larger litter, but you do never know at this stage. I'm hoping it's a litter at this stage. Um, so, and it goes through day 18, she gained a substantial amount. Um, actually, I think she was up to relative gain on there, 77 grams. So you can see it shot up. So that's between um, two weeks and getting towards middle to the end of the three week period. Um, she's kind of really gained quite a lot. So that's where all the weight gain comes on in that third week. Um, they p quite often pile it on. Um, but again, not every rat. We've had rats that have gone stationary. So I've had rats that have gained in the second week and then done nothing. And I'm like, oh, they've reabsorbed. And then suddenly they've shot up in the last two days. So it's a little bit like they like to keep you guessing. Um, Mox has been surprisingly straightforward and um, what I would term uh, quite normal in her gain. She's kind of done it gradually over time. She had a, a bit of a break, thankfully. Between day 18 and day 21, she only put on a few grams. Um, and... That was this morning. Sorry, the rats are throwing brooms at each other. Um, yes, yeah, so she's she's gaining nicely, um, but she's not got to the point where I'm like, oh my God, that rat's going to explode yet. <laughs> um, she feels very nice though. In fact, she's currently free ranging and wondering what on earth that um, situation with the broom was. And actually, I should mention about free range. Um, I still frame, free range my pregnant rats right up to now. This would be her probably her last free range before she goes in the cage. Um, I will stop when I feel that they are no longer able to cope with free range safely. Mog's still quite agile actually. As much as she is a big girl, um, it's not yet causing her major problems. Um, I've had some where I've had to stop a few days before um, I've moved them into the birthing cage. In fact, some I've moved into the birthing cage early because um, they're angry <laughs> at the other rats and they want their space or they're um, so big I'm convinced they're going to kill themselves because my cage is not exactly a kind setup um, if you're kind of kind of carrying around this massive blob um, but yes but I do free range because that's what is normal for my rats and actually stress levels will probably go up if they didn't get to free range um, but if you don't free range your rats don't suddenly start um, and if your rat is the kind of rat that gets a bit stressed on free range don't do it um, it's all about trying to make things comfortable, happy, safe, normal for them as, as late as you can in the pregnancy and it'll help protect them and also keep them happy. So we've got the um, weight gain and we've got the kind of, I will show you the obvious shape changes. What I would say is that what they term um, the shape change in a very obviously heavily pregnant rat is um, they look like they've swallowed an orange. I would say not every rat does, but Mog does. <laughs> um, uh, if you've not already seen the photo, the photo will show up later. Um, she does have a very, very round belly. Though actually, interestingly, from um, was it two days ago I took that photo, 
um, it's actually flattened slightly so it's still round but it's got kind of broader and it's started to kind of slowly sink but this is actually quite normal um, you know, look. Hey, look. <laughs> demonstration um, so she she's actually her belly has got a little bit lower which may mean that I hopefully get a day 22 birth which would be lovely <laughs> um, I, Normally, I'd say more of my rats are born on day 23 than day 22. I get the occasional one day 22 and the occasional one on day 24, which I hate. Um, nothing before or after. I, I know of some cases of day 21 births um, that have been successful. Most are not successful, if I'm honest. Um, and day 25 births, again, most are not successful, but one or two are. And by successful, I mean living babies. Um, Though I would say with your day 25 births, there's more chance of there being a problem for the doe as well. Um, right, so we now know Mog is definitely pregnant. <laughs> um, so what's next? So at day 21, which if if you have rats that are regularly born on day 22, you would probably consider doing this a little bit earlier. I move my girls into the birthing cage. So I know that my line day 22 is possible, but it's probably going to be afternoon later on. Um, and I know that um, day 23 is likely and day 24 is possible. So I move them to the birthing cage um, the evening of day 21. So Mug is about to go into the, the birthing cage here. I'll move them in with a friend. In this case, it's going to be Ellie because I, I favour um, using a doe that's already had babies themselves on the off chance that something should happen and Mog should pop earlier than I think. Um, Ellie is going to be reasonable about the babies and she's not going to get freaked out about them and overreact. To be fair, I've got a few does that I think will be fine, even though they've not had babies. Um, but that's generally um, a preference. If I've got that option, I might as well follow it um, because it's just better for the rats involved. Right, so I will move Mog in with Ellie. So I, I put them in with a friend because that helps them settle. Um, what some people do do actually is they will mate in the birthing cage, um, leave the book in for a period of time. And once the doe looks like Mog, they will take the book out and then she's actually just staying in a, in a familiar cage, which is quite a nice way to do it in a lot of ways. It doesn't work with the way I mate because I like to get the book back settled with its group. Um, but it's it's not a bad thing for the doe, actually. It can be quite kind um, because she's birthing in the place she's lived for a long period of time. Um, mine wouldn't cope so well with a small cage for that length of time either. They get a bit bored and um, they're very used to a lot of activity. So that's one thing to think about when you're doing it. So. Um, Ellie and Mog will move into the birthing cage shortly. At the moment, there's a hammock in there. In fact, what I should say is I've done a separate video, which I'll upload separately, which is just on setting up a, mate, a birthing cage, sorry. Um, and it just talks about what I use and why. Um, so they've got a hammock in there at the moment. They'll spend the night and tomorrow morning, I'll take Ellie and put her back in with the main group and leave Mog. And at that point, I will attempt to not disturb her as much as possible so I, I will actually set up a webcam so I can spy on her from a distance uh, it's not perfect but it satisfies my curiosity it's quite interesting watching things going on um, and I will only come into the rat room to feed the rats and I'll literally just do it very quickly quietly if she's coming up to the front of the cage then I know she's not ready or she wants to see me that's fine I'll go over and check on her if she's in the nest I probably won't bother her other than maybe to throw very quick food in there unless I think she's in labour and that's actually where the webcam comes into its own as well um, you can tell on a webcam stop fighting next to me girls um, yeah you can tell on a webcam um, if they're in labour they, they kind of stretch around um, it's a shame I can't get videos of this on my webcam, it doesn't seem to work like that, or I'm just not very good at technology, um, despite being an engineer. <laughs> um, but yes, they kind of they kind of move around stiffly, awkwardly, they get a bit restless, but they're, they're still very focused around the nest, um, and they kind of start stretching out um, in, in a way that you would normally associate with seeing a rat with ad abdominal pain, which makes sense because they're having contractions. Um, so it's quite interesting, you can tell when they're in labour, so once they're in labour I will not go in that rat room um, unless the labour's been going on for a long period of time. Um, I should probably actually do a, do a separate video on birthing and the kind of aftermath well, once Mark has hopefully had the babies and I'll talk a little bit about that later, um, otherwise we will be at this all day because <laughs> I could just keep on talking. Um, 
so really that's the kind of main thing for the pregnancy for me the pregnancy runs up to about now i mean obviously it, it runs up until labor starts now it's very much about the weight um so i'll move her into her birthing cage i'll make sure she's well fed actually at this stage i might start giving a little bit of extra protein in the food um, really i tend to wait until after they've birthed um because they're not really going to put on a massive amount of weight in the next day or two um, though ideally she will have them by tomorrow morning, like tomorrow midday that would be quite nice that would be very early though for um, our family um, but we shall see so so now I'm getting into the um, somewhat scared mode um, I do this every time and I do wonder why I breed when I get so worried um, not every breeder does but I would say any breeder with a strong attachment to the does involved um, will start to feel a little bit apprehensive they'll want to make sure that the doe births safely because the birthing is the highest risk part of any um, kind of pregnancy um, breeding arrangement um, so over the next few days i'll go from wanting the babies to arrive to not caring what happens about the babies as long as mog's okay and i do this every time i know i'm going to do it and i'm going to have a few restless nights which is why i hope they're born tomorrow um, but they're probably not going to be um, and if not, definitely on Sunday. I don't want it to be on um, Monday if I can help it, because um, I'm back at work then and I can't rush in. Um, not that I would rush in if I was around here anyway. But yes, I just thought I would kind of explain how I'm feeling at the moment, because if you're a new breeder, you might start um, kind of thinking it's weird to just suddenly not care about the babies anymore. Or that it's um, that you're just being silly about worrying about the dough. You're not being silly about it. Bad stuff does happen. Um, hopefully it won't happen in this case but if it does um, I will report back at some point just so you can see the kind of full signs of breeding um, but hopefully in, in a I don't know a few days to a week's time I will have good news and photos of babies will appear pretty soon after I'm sure um, but I'd quite like to do a video just talking about it and my aim is assuming Mog does have um, successful babies um, that I will do like a weekly video just telling you what the babies have been up to, the development milestones that they've hit, um, how Mox coping, that kind of thing, and the risks, some of the things to look out for as we're going along, even how to sex rats and such. So fingers crossed. If not now, then I will do it in my next uh, matings. There'll probably be some more in the new year or springtime-ish, depending what happens with Mog's litter. Um, so keep your eyes pe peeled and um, fingers crossed for Mog and we shall... Um, see what happens. I will update you soon. Bye for now.